Welcome to Champions of Care, brought to you by Oakwood Healthcare. I'm Mary Zatina. Today, we're talking about colon health. We'll talk about the symptoms, surgical options, and even lifestyle choices that can help you keep a healthy colon. With me in the studio is Dr. Fawad Azrak. He's an Oakwood-affiliated gastroenterologist with offices in Dearborn, and I'd like to introduce you to him. Welcome, Dr. Azrak. Thanks, Mary, for having me. Let's start really basic. What is the colon, what is its function, and how is it structured? So the colon is the last part of your digestive system. It absorbs uh, water and uh, salt from the solid waste before they are eliminated from the body. It does not play a major role in uh, absorbing uh, food and nutrients. It consists of many parts, uh, cecum, ascending colon, transverse colon, descending colon, sigmoid colon, and the rectum. Uh, some experts uh, separated the rectum from the colon uh, because the treatment and the staging of uh, the cancer is slightly different between uh, the rectum and the colon. What are some of the risk factors for uh, colon diseases? Okay. Genetics and environmental factors can increase the likelihood of colon diseases and neoplasm uh, specifically. Uh, although the, sus the susceptibility, uh, genetic susceptibility can increase your risk to tremendously for uh, colonic neoplasm cancer, uh, most cases are sporadic rather than familial. There are risk factors that can uh, change the screening interval for uh, uh, and the guidelines for colon cancer. And these are um, a family, strong family history of uh, colon cancer, uh, personal family history of uh, cancer or adenomatous uh, polyps, uh, and some genetic uh, syndromes such as uh, Lynch syndrome. Having inflammatory bowel disease also can change the screening guidelines. Other factors that may influence uh, the uh, screening uh, guidelines are uh, um, race, African-American race, uh, or having kidney transplant. There's other factors, considered risk factors, but will not change your uh, screening and uh, guidelines. And these are having diabetes, coronary artery disease, uh, gallbladder surgery, uh, um, or uh, smoking and uh, alcohol consumption. You may uh, be in uh, some uh, data uh, suggesting uh, consumption of red meat can increase your risk, mm -hmm. uh, but the data are uh, somewhat uh, conflicting. Uh, the World Health Organization suggests that the greatest risk of poor vitamin D uh, status is uh, uh, colon cancer. I'm Look. glad you brought that up. We're going to really go deeply into that topic later in our show. But let's talk a little bit more about the screening tools because the good news for colon health is that there are tools and techniques available to detect problems in the colon. Can you talk about some of those uh, screening techniques? Uh, yes, uh, there are actually uh, many uh, 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 screening modalities now available for colon uh, cancer. Uh, the uh, 2008 uh, U.S. Preventive uh, Services Task Force um, suggest, suggested uh, um, stool studies to detect blood in a stool, in addition to endos uh, endoscopic uh, methods, uh, sigmoidoscopy and colonoscopy, to uh, screen for colon cancer. Now, for the stool studies, they're usually done uh, annually and they uh, detect, uh, if they detect blood in a stool, then uh, the patient should uh, uh, go through a colonoscopy to evaluate the positive study. The uh, colonoscopy is, um, uh, is a simple but invasive uh, procedure to uh, screen for uh, col uh, colorectal cancer. It, uh, uh, it actually examines the inside lining of the large intestine by putting a thin, flexible tube uh, into the um, uh, rectum and advance it throughout the uh, colon. That tube has a camera and a light uh, at the end of it. The physician during the procedure will uh, perform a biopsy taking uh, pieces of uh, uh, tissue uh, of the colon or remove polyps during the procedure. Now there's other radiological tests to screen for colorectal cancers such as uh, uh, barium enema and uh, CT colonography uh, and they're advocated by some medical societies but they are less commonly used. Well, we sure do hear a lot about colonoscopies and at what age we should start having them. So to help our viewers better understand that particular procedure, the Champions of Care video team went to the Dearborn Surgery Center to see how a colonoscopy really happens. So let's take a look at that now, shall we? Thanks, Mary. 
Now we're going to talk about something that I don't think anybody likes to think about, colonoscopy. But we've come to the Dearborn Surgery Center, affiliated with Oakwood, to find out more about why this is so important and what the team here does to make it as comfortable as possible. I am with Dr. Charles Sloan. He is a gastroenterologist. And also Ricardo Borrego. He is an anesthesiologist with the team. Thank you both for being with us. My pleasure. I'm going to start with you, Dr. Sloan. Um, why is getting a regular screening like a colonoscopy so important? Well, we've discovered that uh, when we do a screen, we find the tumors, and we, um, the sooner that tumor is discovered, uh, the more likely it's of smaller size, and therefore either correctable by colonoscopy itself with polypectomy, or at least it's at a stage where we won't have progression to death. So it's early diagnosis, that's what we focus on, and that's why we do the screening colonoscopy. And about what age uh, should someone start receiving the regular colonoscopy? Well, as the standard today is usually we start at age 50. Um, we'll start at a younger age if they have maybe a, a strong family history or if they have other predisposing conditions. And then if there's no polyps on that first screen, then we do a screen every 10 years thereafter. What is the, uh, the preparation like? I understand that that's almost as you know, concerning as the actual procedure itself. What do you need to do? Most patients are of the opinion that's the hardest part of the whole exam. And I think they're right. I've had colonoscopies myself. Uh, it is a challenge. You have to really commit to doing a good job. And it requires a lot of liquid consumption, um, usually a liquid laxative with or without associated tablets. Um, it's really critical for this exam that you be well cleaned out so that the gastroenterologist has good vision and so that he can find those polyps and remove them before they become malignant. But the preparation is difficult. A lot of older folks can't tolerate the volume. We try to modify it somewhat age-dependent and disease-dependent, so it's uh, much more reasonable for the given patient. So what exactly is the procedure like? How long does it take? What do you do? Well, the examination is, is a team effort. My part of the examination, the colonoscopy, were, would usually take anywhere from 15 to 30 minutes. It would depend on how difficult the exam is. Some patients are more challenging if they've had surgeries, if they've had irradiation for other diseases. But generally, it's a 15 to 20 minute procedure. Um, if we remove polyps, we add a few more minutes, but thankfully, it's not a long, drawn out kind of uh, examination. Now, Dr. Brago, I, I am going to face my first colonoscopy at some point in my life, and I've never had one. All I've heard is it's very uncomfortable. People kind of dread the experience. Uh, but how do you, as an anesthesiologist, help people get through that procedure as easily as possible? Well, I think uh, historically patients have, have felt that it's going to be a very uncomfortable uh, procedure, even in spite of after going through the prep, as Dr. Sloan mentioned, uh, it becomes a very anxiety-provoking procedure. Um, but we've found over the years you know, that um, with the proper anesthetic, which we, we utilize these days now for this type of procedure, albeit simple compared to other surgical procedures, uh, patients have a very pleasant experience where they're able not to have any discomfort. They're, they essentially sleep throughout the whole procedure. We use a very short-acting uh, medication called propofol or diprovan. Uh, which is well known. Um, patients fall asleep very quickly. Uh, they are spontaneously breathing, yet they are not eliciting any of the pain that's associated with the colonoscopy itself. Most patients on an average, after receiving the, uh, the anesthetic, relate that there's some of the best sleep they've had in a long time. Now, Dr. Sloan, if you do find a polyp, first off, what exactly is a polyp? Why is it so concerning? Well, a, a polyp is a type of tumor. It is a growth. and we discovered over the years that polyps uh, may harbor a malignancy or have a small focus of malignancy or we do know for sure that if they stay in your colon over the years it will often become malignant. This is very much a team effort of taking care of someone throughout this procedure and so what is, is your philosophy and kind of Oakwood's philosophy here at the Dearborn Surgery Center on how to deliver that great care? Well our, our philosophy here is definitely when we talk about colonoscopy is prevention comfort and safety and all of us are committed to that but we're a team we're a team of not just the gastroenterologists we rely heavily upon the anesthesiologist the nurse anesthetist and we have very talented 
uh, so-called endoscopy nurses and technicians. These people have been doing this for a long time. Between the prep and the anesthesia, those are the keys for a, a good colonoscopy. And the anesthesia has just made it so much, much more better for me, the gastroenterologist, and first and foremost, the patient. They have a wonderful experience. Uh, Dr. Berger, anything else you'd like to add? Yeah, and I add and, and, and uh, also echo Dr. Sloan's comments. This is truly a team effort from point of entry to point of discharge. The patient, uh, our, our objective as a team is to make them not feel as if they're having a surgical procedure, but that they're coming to somewhere where they can entrust themselves, their family, to a pleasant experience, a safe one, and a high quality one. I want to thank Dr. Charles Sloan and Dr. Ricardo Borrego for your time. And for more information, you can go to our website and call 800-543-WELL. Dr. Azrak, what would you want someone who may be due for a colonoscopy or other screening to know? Um, I want them to know, Mary, that uh, colorectal cancer is a silent killer. Symptoms usually happen uh, in advanced stages, such as abdominal pain, anemia, or blood in stool. And the uh, screening uh, for colorectal cancer does save lives, as proven by multiple studies. And it, it's not a one-time deal. That's a very important point they need to know. If you choose uh, stool studies or choose uh, colonoscopy, it's not a one-time deal. This probably need to be repeated on multiple occasions and depend also on the results of the screening uh, mo uh, modality. If they elect to choose colonoscopy, as Dr. Sloan mentioned in the video, it's the most important thing is to have a good bowel prep and adhere to the instruction uh, prior to your colonoscopy. This will make your colonoscopy safer, faster, and provide the most protection from colorectal cancer. Well, Dr. Azrak, I want to thank you so much for helping us understand the, the function of a healthy colon and our options and screening tools for making sure colon cancer is detected early. You are an Oakwood-affiliated physician. You are taking new patients, I understand, yeah, in your yeah, offices in Dearborn? Correct. I want to thank you so much for being with us. Thank you very much, Mary, for having me, and uh, uh, thanks for uh, providing the public with the information about this important topic. When we return, we'll speak to a specialist about options to treat colorectal disease. Please stay with us. If you are one of the 57,000 people in Michigan receiving a cancer diagnosis this year, it's good to know that nutrition services are available at no cost to you. The Cancer Center at Oakwood Hospital and Medical Center provides patients with free, individualized nutrition counseling on site. You'll meet with a cancer and nutrition specialist to develop a personalized plan to minimize nutritional side effects and weight loss during treatment. For more information, visit oakwood.org or call 1-800-543-WELL.